Hey, if you've been paying attention to any of the political discussions online for the past two years, you probably noticed this very weird phenomenon in which many people of the working class actually will fight for things that benefit the wealthy. I want to talk to you about this weird phenomenon that defies all rational thought because have you considered that you also might be doing things that are benefiting the wealthy instead of you and people like ourselves? I want to talk to you about this today and I want to talk to you about how the workers of the world can actually unite. First of all, it's very clear that more and more people on social media are realizing that there is a class war. We have no reason to fight for the wealthy. They poison our water, they feed us unhealthy food which will lead us to disease so that we can pay them for their medications and become addicted to them. They give us jobs that don't pay us enough so we have to have multiple jobs. And they ship the jobs abroad so that they can pay other people even less than they pay us here. They also slave us away through debt by giving us student loans, loans to pay our medical bills, and more loans to pay for many of the things that we live with on our daily lives. Not to mention that the factories that actually still are in the US, many of them will be taken to bankruptcy and lay off hundreds of people, thousands of people, while the CEOs give themselves multi-million dollar bonuses. And while all of this is happening, the rich that control the government are just selling themselves to the highest bidder without any consideration who they hurt along the way. They have failed us all. So then to go on social media and see many working class people fighting against universal healthcare, against universal basic income, it makes no fucking sense. And it's easier to excuse those those people as oh just being ignorant or maybe they're just racist and but have you ever stopped to think about in which ways am I behaving like them in which ways am I fighting for the rich when I should really be fighting for people like me I want us to take a closer look at a few key things that we might be doing that really are not beneficial to us at all number one is the pursuit of the American dream if you think about it at this point the American dream is just that just a dream many people cannot survive on just one job alone. So how are they gonna work hard enough to become billionaires and rock stars? And not only are many of us still under the false impression that if we work hard enough, we too can become millionaires, but that we can do it without having any outside help. Over and over again, the media is presenting us with these stories of self-made millionaires and now even billionaires that worked really hard enough and made their empires. But when you actually examine the individual stories, more closely, you realize there is a recurring theme of most of these people coming from wealthy families or having connections because they were of a wealthy family or just having more opportunities in their life. Self-made Bill Gates came from a wealthy family. Mark Zuckerberg's parents helped him by mortgaging their house. And self-made billionaire Kylie Jenner just had a small loan of a few million dollars and a reality show. These people didn't just work hard, they were lucky. To be born to a rich family, to be born to a family that had enough connections, to be close to opportunities that just gave them a little bit of an easier road than it would have done any other person. Now contrast this with USA Today reporting in September 2018 that many People in the United States are reported 40% of U.S. people have $400 or less in their savings account for an emergency. So almost half of the population is one emergency away from poverty. How are we supposed to become millionaires and rock stars if we can't even get sick? And by definition then, about half of America is living in poverty, really. Why don't we then feel like we are living in poverty? But like, how can we when we have so much stuff? If you have watched my other videos, you probably know I'm from Costa Rica and I moved here when I was 13. And just in that simple move, I could already notice right away that it's just a lot easier to buy stuff in the US. This same issue also became very apparent to me when I lived in Mississippi. If you watched some of my older videos, you probably remember. I was teaching there for a while and I was teaching in a community that was of lower socioeconomic status. 
And why this issue became very apparent to me was because many of the students didn't show up to school with many of their materials, but the same student might have an iPhone or might have like a more expensive sneakers. And I'm not saying this to talk any shit, it happens in every community. You probably know people in your own social circles that even though they might have iPhones, they might have a nice car, maybe even really nice clothes from day to day, they might not have healthcare or they might not have enough to eat healthy food. The problem for me is not necessarily that we're buying these luxury items, but the problem to me is that is this is another area in which it becomes very deceptive. You feel like you live a life of wealth and luxury because you have all these little items around your home. But we really don't. We really have a lot less than people who are truly wealthy. And you don't get to actually put it into perspective until you hear the figure. To be part of the 1%, at least in the United States, you have to make $400,000 a year or more. And when you really put that number into perspective, it's kind of a crazy number, which most of us will never see in a year during our lifetime. So really 99% of us should be coming together to work towards the same causes, but we don't. And I think many of us have gotten used to having so little that we're afraid to ask for more. In the LA Times article, America is falling out of love with billionaires and it's about time. The author actually came up with a really interesting point of view, which I've never really thought about, which is that not only do millionaires and billionaires make money of the labors of others, which is more obvious, but they actually also benefit a lot and create a lot of their wealth from the social programs that taxes go to pay for. For example, you can't really get to a businesses if there are no roads or sidewalks or lights, making sure that the traffic makes sense. And when you really think about this, then it makes sense why a business would pay more for social services than would a normal citizen. Which is something that's very simple, but I actually personally never really thought about it. Businesses do benefit from things like roads and light signals. Personally, I think both of these ideas are very fascinating, but especially the idea that the worker is a key component in creating wealth. So for us to ask for more wealth from our bosses, it's not really a crazy idea, it's actually just fair. And same thing goes with wanting businesses to pay more taxes than normal people. It's just fair. You're benefiting just as much. Actually, you're probably benefiting more because you get to keep your profits from there being roads that get to your businesses more easily. Whereas I make no money going home on a paid road. <laughs> so man, that people with obscene amounts of wealth and businesses pay more in taxes that will go towards healthcare, social programs, education, it's not a crazy idea, it's a fair idea. But you already know that. What I wanna to talk to you about that is that we actually should be asking for you more. The rich have enslaved the masses through low wages, images of wealth, and most importantly, debt. Let's actually quickly examine how we can impact all of those. Unfortunately, until we become business owners or politicians, there's very little that we can do towards fixing low wages. And that's actually a very depressing thought. Until you become one of those two, your power is with voting the right people into office. And that's sad because in the past, we've been given this idea that it's very difficult to change the government. But I think in the last elections, we've seen that it's actually not difficult to change the government. Thankfully, there are many more everyday people that are run, uh, willing to run for politicians because we can see now that wealthy politicians that fight for corporations are of no use to us. So we actually do have choices now that we have things like social media and uh, we can make like people's voting history a lot more transparent, for example. And personally, that's something that gives me a lot of hope for the future, that politicians can no longer hide their intentions. And really, that's the biggest threat to greedy politicians, just the ability to access information for free. And that's why this big fight over fake news is so important to our generation, because that's what's actually voting people out of office, the, people that, the fact that we can see how politicians are truly acting and who they're fighting for. However, if we're not part of the 
political landscape, I think the biggest part in which we can stop fighting for the rich is actually by keeping our debt low, if having any at all. If you actually think about it, you realize that in the 21st century, we are now again living under indentured servitude, which is illegal. I learned about this concept in my Latin American history classes. You would have a landowner who would bring over workers to work the land during the harvest season, and he would give them a small loan so that they could live, and, and then the worker was free to sell their harvest, and of course, with that money, pay back the landowner. Well, what would happen in practice is that the workers debt just got bigger over time. It was very difficult to pay the landlord. So they were really just under this debt that kept them a slave to the landowner. So it was just another form of slavery um, through money. And I feel like that's how most people live today. We are a slave to our student loans, to our car bill, to our mortgages, to now I, even our medical bills because most of us don't have health care and we have to take loans to take care of our health. Really, most of us are indentured servants. It's just that the debt has been decentralized. I no longer just owe my money to a landlord or even my boss. I owe money to the car dealer, to the hospital, the landlord where I live. Your money to your college, your money to the credit card company. We are slaves. Once again, it's just that we are a slave to our debts. At first glance, this sounds, of course, extremely depressing, but I think this is the area in which we actually have the most control. Ironically, the downfall of capitalism is leading us more towards communal activities like car sharing, co-living, co-working, because we just simply don't have enough money. The generations before us were brainwashed into thinking that to live a normal life, you need to get married, have a big wedding, have a, buy a house, have two or three kids, buy a car, buy a second car, have a pet, and it's like many of us will never get to experience that until much later in life now, if at all, because we can't afford it. So I think the one good side of this is that we just can't go into as much debt anymore because we literally cannot <laughs> go into debt because we just have no money. The reason why that is so dangerous is because it keeps us compliant. How can you go protest on the streets when you gotta pay your mortgage? You have to be at work. I've actually had that thought many times in the past few years. Like, there have been big marches in LA, and I can't leave because I have to be at work. So, their rich is benefiting from me having to pay something every month. How can all of us work for a better world when we're too busy paying our debts and just making it to work on time? The more personal freedom you have, the more willing you are to fight for your own freedom and that of others. One clear distinction, of course, I like to point out that there are some debts that have now be become necessary, like people that don't have health care, if they have an emergency, they might have to take a loan. So that's not to make you feel bad if you have debts that you had to take out, like I had to take student loans. I'm not, I'm pissed at myself for taking so much at a time when I was so young and stupid that I didn't know any better. But that was unnecessary debt. I feel really happy that, about the fact that I went to school. So what I'm talking about here is unnecessary debt. Why it's so important to identify unnecessary debt is because we're 100% in control over it. My biggest concern with debt, again, is that you just can't really do the things you want. Like, I think about it all the time. I would love to have a part-time job and pay my rent and dedicate more time to my blog. But I can't because I have to pay my student loans. So even a debt that I saw, that I still see as positive mostly, is keeping me trapped in this like daily routine of going to work and the days just go by and I don't have the ability to devote all my time to things like, to things that really bring me joy in life, like this blog. And that's why this whole thing about fighting for things that benefit the rich pisses me off so much because while we are entrapped in this cycle of debt and going to work every day and having maybe even multiple jobs that we need to take care of and fighting just to have good health, rich people get to have everything. Like the 1% gets to have so many vacations. They get to rest. Rest has become a luxury and we really shouldn't be.
Richard Branson's blog post, the way that we all work is going to change. Actually, I'm thinking about this. More and more people today are actually choosing employers that will give them the ability to work flexible hours or the ability to work remotely because more young people today, we realize that what's important is not just how much money is in our bank accounts, but we want to spend more time with family. We want to spend more time doing the things that we are passionate about. If technology is becoming so ingrained with our everyday lives, that really means that we can actually work less. Richard Branson is one example of that kind of employer that will give these kind of options to their employees. And he's not the only one. And the fact that business owners are willing to negotiate this kind of thing, it actually makes me feel like, well, they might be willing to negotiate more things that we didn't even know to think about, like, more vacation time, four-day weeks, and three-day weekends. What are the things as citizens that we not thought to demand? For me, I think it's very important that we begin to demand that we get to choose how we live, that we get to ask for more rest. We should be able to take a break from our job and have enough saved in the bank if we ever feel like it. And why are we not demanding things like that? Why do we feel like there are luxuries? So long story short, this video is an invitation for you to examine your life. In which ways are you actually fighting for the rich? Are you promoting images of wealth? Are you falling into the idea that you have to chase luxury items and try to show off your wealth and really incurring debt or not building up your savings? And of course, how can you develop the discipline to live a lifestyle that will benefit you more in the long run and not rich people that are not fighting for you. I don't know, I guess I just want to invite you to think a little bit more outside the box. Let me know your ideas and thoughts in the comments. That's really all I have for you today. Thank you for watching if you still are. Subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And remember to subscribe to my newsletter on my website.